Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. And I'm here once again with lecture 12 of drama 2, that is modern drama. Um, what we have been doing so far in Junu and the Peacock, we try to understand, um, and we try to have an overall view of the play. We um, analyzed some of the themes, we went through um, some characters in detail as well. Now what today we are going to do, we are going to analyze the theme of nothingness, hollowness and purposelessness. In, in my previous talk, um, I tried to elaborate on um, what are different types of influences we can trace in Okese's writing, where we um, um, primarily we discussed three types of influences, the social, cultural and personal. And we saw these influences in shape of Irish Civil War as a social influence, cultural influence where we, are, we talked about mythology, a combination of contemporary and method, method, mythological dimensions. And in personal influence, um, we saw um, okay, say as a feminist. Today we are um, going to add into the discussion by seeing um, how Okese's works are a representation of contemporary influences in terms of um, the air of nothingness, hollowness and purposelessness. Um, and when we are discussing these terms, we are trying to see Irish Civil War, the concept of jingoism, how it affects the society and the individuals how it crushes the economy and the system, how it disintegrates um, the family structure, how it demolishes the psychology of the people and how it creates generation gap. Um, and discussing all these aspects separately and then uh, joining them together will help us understand how this influence results in nothingness hollowness and purposelessness that is presented by Okese's work, Junu and the Peacock. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, starting with it, Sean Okese was born in um, 1880 and died in 1964 and you know it's the era of Irish Civil War. Um, although the Civil War is um, presented as an activity between two to three years, however, we know that wars take place in centuries and they cover centuries as well. The play has been written on the background of Irish Civil War as it has been discussed repeatedly which has been going for um, centuries. So it's an activity of centuries that um, takes in generations and generations. We will see Janu and the Peacock um, a, a very active concept of jingoism. Uh, although Johnny is the leading role, um, leading character who portrays the um, role of a jingoist. However, um, what jingoism means, we need to know right in the beginning so we are able to build up the connection. Uh, jingoism can be taken, can be understood as, as an activity, an intention, um, um, an appeal intended to arouse patriotic emotions. But these are not very normal patriotic emotions. Let's see uh, what denotations we have regarding this terminology. Um, I will present two kind of um, dictionary definitions um, regarding jingoism. One dictionary calls it an extreme nationalism characterized especially by a belligerent foreign policy, chauvinistic patriotism. The other dictionary, however, says that it's an extreme or eccentric national loyalty that is hostile to the interest of any other nation. Here you become extremely biased, extremely selfish. To protect your emotion of nationalism, um, you can do anything not knowing whether it is right or it is wrong. That is called jingoism. And we see um, Okese portraying this um, concept um, in his play by providing us and by flashing uh, one of his dialogues, um, principle is a principle, telling us that principle, uh, the, the achievement of principle um, caused sacrifice and sacrifice of many lives in the play. And this is the um, debate uh, that is going on in between all of the characters during the play as well. 
So, jingoism is extreme patriotism in the form of aggressive foreign policy. In practice, it is a country's advocacy of the use of threats um, or actual force against other countries in order to safeguard what it perceives as its national interest. So, we see that although there is a noble cause behind this uh, patriotic emotion and that is safeguarding uh, one's personal national interest, however, um, in order to do so, the um, activists are, um, they are um, emotional enough to do any kind of, um, to take any kind of action. It can be a threat minimum a threat or maximum it can be actual force presented against any kind of um, uh, animity. Um, so colloquial, a colloquial concept can be that it refers to excessive bias and selfishness in judging one's own country as superior to others, an extreme type of nationalism. Um, However, wars do take place because of this extreme nationalism because unless you put your country's benefit um, prior to your personal benefits or country's um, life prior to personal lives, you are not able to fight for your country. So the term originated in, in Britain expressing a um, uh, attitude, a typical kind of attitude toward Russia in the 1870s and appeared in the American press by 1893. So this, these dates basically refer to um, the um, origin of this terminology, jingoism, that appeared first in 1870s. So jingoism is a kind of aggressive attitude. Moving on. Um, there are many factions involved in the play, many um, activities belonging to different groups and categories of people. Um, one is there are the free staters, the other there are also those who, who demand um, have ruled Ireland within the authority of English parliament. So they want Ireland to be ruled by English par Parliament. And there are the um, unionist, union, there are the unionist, unionist, okay, I'm doing it. And the third party is, there are these unionists who want unity with um, the Ireland and all of the states inside. May I slide the baraka room, okay? Okay, this is slide eight. So we see that there are many groups involved um, in the play and these groups are representing different kinds of um, philosophy regarding Irish civil war. One group is the group of free staters, the other group is the group of uh, people who would, lo who would like Ireland to be ruled by English parliament and the third group is group of unionists uh, who would want Ireland to be united. So, um, although we have discussed already what what uh, is Irish World War, Irish War, Civil War, and what kind of background it has, just to refresh your memories, um, the dispute. What was the basic dispute? Main Ireland got independence after the First World War. That we know. Ireland is divided into Southern and Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland is now called. Ulester, the people of Maine Island are Roman Catholic. The majority of Ulester is Anglican, so there is political and religious problem. Now, it's a pol political as well as religious problem. Um, and what are the what are the point of views? Um, they are either to unite with Maine Island, or to unite with England or to be totally independent was the main problem or enigma. Either to unite with Maine Ireland or to unite with England to come under English Parliament or the third is to be totally independent. So these were three different um, uh, groups of people who were raising their voices and who portrayed this concept of Jingoism. Now um, understanding Juno and the Peacock um, 
in the background of civil Irish war, um, Okese is very much against the war, fought under any pretext. In our previous discussion, we discussed Okese's um, um, position as a person who personally dislikes war, um, no matter for what noble cause it is. Um, he def he uh, points out um, to the uh, the loss, the gravity of loss, uh, the great um, loss of lives and and society and generation that is caused by wars. Um, so he closely observed in his play how war affects the society and the individuals, how war crushes the economy of a country, how it dis disintegrates the units of a family, how it demolishes the psychology of individuals and how it results into the gaps created between generations. So basically uh, we can take all of these points as themes presented uh, in the background of Irish Civil War in the play. So um, this brings us back to Okese's position that we, um, we discussed in our previous talk as well. Okese has taken a stand um, against social unjust, inequality and violence caused by um, war. And he says that it is socially unjust and it is being presented as the exploitation of man by man. Um, an Irish man is killed by another Irish man and he refers to inequality in terms of man's inhuman treatment towards another man. So it's inhumanity that he um, highlights in the, under this theme. And the third theme is of violence. War is violence. War is destruction. War is chaos. War is disturbance. So it's, he refers to man's um, um, barbarity against man, against humankind. Um, how does he portray the theme of social unjust, inequality and violence? The play begins with Mary's reading a newspaper. The very first information we get from the play is of a um, gruesome murder. Who is being murdered here? Um, on a little by road out by Byton, Fingles, he was found. So we see a loss of life. We see um, how the life is um, disgraced. How a person is easily murdered, murdered and left alone by a roadside. This is portrayed very artistically, however, very simply in the beginning of the play. So the theme of violence is introduced right in the beginning of the play. Not only violence but inhumanity and unjust. Okay, so evidently has sympathies for the poverty-stricken and war-ridden Irish society. There is nothing predictable in Ireland. Everyone is in extreme danger. Um, if you remember, um, in the last lecture, we discussed few of the dialogues. Um, and these dialogues, um, which were very funny um, when they are articulated first, but when we analyze them later, we find that there is a kind of pathos and sadness and a glimpse of reality hidden in, um, in the articulation. For example, when Joxer um, gets the um, um, command by Captain... Boil to um, just check out of the window and see who is knocking at the door. Uh, Joxer says, you want me to get a um, bullet into my kisser? So that shows that um, nothing, uh, nothing is um, predictable and no one is out of danger and everyone is um, um, uncertain about situation um, and the security is a question. So anybody can bullet anybody anywhere. Um, they are hanging between life and death all the time and that is very clear in the, in the, in the script, in the dialogue delivery, in the dialogue development in the play. Um, then how is this brutality foreign to Irish men is presented. There are lots of references in the play regarding Ireland's religious and political history. We see and we um, just got to know that this was not only a political conflict, this was a religious conflict. Um, 
Irish makes many attempts to shake off the foreign yoke. These foreign um, bodies, foreigners are very inhuman to them. In 1916, 100 of casualties and the execution of the leaders are um, far less examples of their brutality. But this inhumanity is not just caused by foreigners. The real problem arises when the killing of Irishmen by Irishmen. So now what is happening that uh, the complaint is not only against um, these foreigners who were killing Irishmen. The problem started and the problem got um, expanded and it got serious, uh, even more serious when Irishmen started killing Irishmen. War or to be more exact a civil war has no solution to men's problem rather it aggravates the miseries of victims those who lose their lives and those who lose their uh, pleasures of life and ease of life lives because of the dead ones um, are the left alone ones um, they add into the miseries uh, into in the society the civil war is not confined um, to two fractions, rather it expands to the whole Ireland. The death of Robbie Tancred and Johnny Boyle are perfect examples of brutality and inhumanity. Now, um, Johnny, who has lost an arm and has a hip shattered in a fight, is at the end dragged away and shot by his former Republican commanders um, and because he betrayed um, his comrade Tancred. We see that betrayal, the theme of betrayal is there. The theme of uh, volunteering uh, for this national um, emotion of nationalism and patriotism is there. However, later on, um, the fear of death can be seen as well. The fear of nothingness can be seen as well. The fear of um, no outcome is coming up can be seen as well. And then it ends up uh, again at death. So nothing is happening. It starts from death and it ends into death. So is equal to nothingness, hollowness and purposelessness of Irish civil war, of a civil war in general is presented by Sean O'Kesse. All this shows that Ireland is preying on herself. Earlier, Johnny had undoubtedly behaved heroically, but the Irish Civil War compelled him to betray his comrade. So the betrayal, it is also shown in Ocasse's, um writing. We know that Ocasse is uh, he's not only a feminist writer who speaks for um, women's right, he speaks for human's right as well. So we see him uh, not only finding the ills in the society, but also exploring the reasons of those ills being produced. So if he brings the, uh, the act of betrayal in front through his characters, he also digs into the situation to find out what provokes that uh, act of betrayal. So this means the stupid civil war is turning into traitors because of its nothingness and hollowness and purposelessness. And Okay, so it brings back to brings us back to the point of discussion that one of the reason behind this betrayal is the understanding that this war is ending into nothing. It started with fear and it is ending at fear. So there is no cause being served by this brutality, inhumanity and violence. Um, now we see that um, Okese used a very interesting um, literary device of mirrorism where inhumanity is shown by provide, providing glimpse of humanity, where betrayal is shown by providing um, a glimpse of um, uh, principles, where um, realism is shown by providing glimpse of escapism. So this this literary device of mirrorism is very well utilized by the writer. Um, he does not only throw light on, on the very concept that he wants to bring in front, uh, he also takes the, um, takes the opposite of that very aspect and uh, create this back and forth movement between um, the background and the foreground of the subject. So 
inhumanity is not only presented through the act of inhumanity however as the act of humanity too Juno emerges as a great humanist and a realist she is a true pacifist and is against man's inhumanity against man so we see Juno as a peace lover um, as a peace making figure in not only in the family but towards society too she has an active um, an acute observation and she knows about the truth of things somehow she has this um, depth in her personality and again the depth of her personality is mirrored um, opposite into her daughter Mary who is a shallow who is shown as a shallow character who is very judgmental so we see this characteristics of um, uh, knowing the truth of the thing, having the um, having that eyesight, uh, having that depth of personality of knowing um, things um, under the surface, is not only projected through um, an accurate figure of Junu. It is it is shown through the opposite of that very characteristics in the character of Mary. So to highlight the effect, um, as tragic comedy is used to uh, to give the flavor of tragedy and comedy at the same time however tragedy is used to enhance comedy is used to enhance the effect of tragedy um, we find Juno very realist and anti-idealistic um, again the the idealist the idealism the the very act of idealism the philosophy of idealism is presented very well and we find two of these uh, characters Junu and um, her husband um, supporting the different um, view of idealism one is kind of idealistic personality and the other is escapist in his nature when Mary emphasizes that one ought to stand by one's principle being a principle is a principle and tries to justify her call of strike Junu very realistically remarks and says when the employer sacrifices one victim, the trades union go one better, be sacrificing a hundred. There is no point in standing for principle when it is when it is time to save humanity, because principles are for for men. Men are not for principles. So this idea of um, being united with one's principle when they are harming humanity in any way is clearly rejected by the writer um, being a realist she has a firm belief in the idea that the fault does not lie with the stars but with the people themselves she says ah what can God do again the stupidity of men so um, she is shown a clear realist figure who does not blame anyone not even God for any misfortune um, taking place or any mishappenings like um, these people would do who would blame stars who would blame their gods and goddesses for being cruel to them unjust to them however what she does is she calls and pragmatically analyze situation and gives reasons logical reasons for any mishap in the in their lives um, we see the domestic tragedy which mainly springs out from uh, pregnancy of Mary the illegitimate relationship she gets in um, and that is due to the inhumanity of the male character so here um, Okay, say is not only presenting um, social unjust and inequality and violence of society where an Irishman is killing another Irishman he is showing um, the effects of these ills where um, where it's creating a gender bias where it is creating gender gap man is being enemy of women how um, Okay, so shows Mary's character as one of those characters who are being where she's being victimized by a man. Um, that male chauvinistic society cannot tolerate a mistake by a young girl. Whereas on the other hand, the idiots like Captain Boyle and Jock Sedele are left unaccountable. So it's not only Mary who's making a mistake, no matter what kind of mistakes she's making, mistakes are there 
um, these errors uh, are there made by other characters as well but being male characters it is easy for them to just um, uh, being uh, just get ignored however Mary is not only being blamed she is being punished too um, hope for a good time is only due to the courage of women they are very human and cooperative we see Jox's character we see uh, Captain Boyle's character and we see Johnny Johnny's character too who when the time of suffering comes in to not only react as hopeless um, unmotivated being they keep on lingering with the same thoughts and leave all hopes for tomorrow however the women representation in the play is shown as um, a kind of figure who will fight against suffering in the time uh, of need and also will keep up her hope for silver lining for future too and that keeps her motivated that keeps her struggling that's what Juno did and that's what Mary did even after uh, she being betrayed by um, um, Johnny, she being betrayed by um, Bentham, she does not leave hope for a good tomorrow, a good future, and she joins her mother. Okay, so also draws our attention towards the brutality caused by the circumstances, where um, he shows um, this brutality um, through the repetition of significance of deep dialogues. Um, the words of Mrs. Tancred, lamentation, um, after um, the death, um, reminds and makes Juno think about uh, the um, murder of her own son. Um, Sacred Heart of the Crucified Jesus, take away our hearts of stone and give us hearts of flesh. Take away this, mun this murdering hate and give us thin own eternal love. So here um, what is being shown is being shown as a is a, is a kind of pleading situation where humans they are pleading um, for sensitivity in fellow humans um, here like you can see in the dialogue the heart of stone um, is used as uh, as a kind of symbol um, for the kind of sensitivity being observed in their fellow men in the society so against the vanity and moral bankruptcy um, that was causing this inhumanity, inequality and um, social unjust and again violence as well um, of masculine characters in particular, Okese elevates the mother figure when Junu plans to work for Mary and her unborn child. Junu suffers the pain of existence by uh, but she sustains life. She is hopeful. She looks forward to that silver lining. Um, then uh, this idea of or these idea ideas of wholeness, purposelessness and nothingness are further colored by another sub conflict presented in the in the play and that is the conflict between appearances and reality the conflict between reality and materialism the conflict between principles and uh, materialism let's see how does this add into the um, fire of uh, the theme that um, Okese is trying to lit into the text um, Nugent wants other to respect Irish people, national regard for the dead, but stitches suits for the civil guards at night. It's a kind of dramatic irony um, that is um, presented by Sean O'Kesse. Do you remember dramatic irony? We discussed that in one of our um, lectures in the beginning. So it is shown when you are speaking against one thing and in your private life you're supporting that very thing by your actions it's a kind of irony being presented by the writer um, and this particular example was of the tailor who stitches suits for the guards um, at night time however in daytime he speaks against them then the opportunist class represented by the tailor has also been condemned. Um, this class, this this class is basically shown um, through the these ironic dialogues and ironic activities where they are um, apparently uh, supporting one uh, group of people, however, working practically for the other because they are looking for their personal benefits. 
According to Akhese, this opportunist class um, is more harmful than even the um, those um, emotionally, extremely emotional um, nationalist because uh, they can be predictable in their actions. However, this class uh, that is full of um, deception cannot be predictable at all. You you do not know the person who calls himself your friend is your friend or not. They themselves become the cause of civil war and play a double role, the, the role of Brutus. Um, thus we see Okese very beautifully depicting man's humanity towards women, man's humanity, inhumanity towards man. So it's not only that Okese is bringing forward um, his concern for um, Humans' right. He is also talking about um, his concerns of women ri women's right. Okay, says at heart a humanist and pacifist, a peace lover. He considers life mere inevitable, and all idealism is um, subservient to it. He condemns all principles and gives one and the only principle to live all the days of life peacefully. Um, how this theme of Another subtext of principle versus materialism adds colors into the main theme. Um, let's see where principles and reality is brought um, in con is 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 brought forward by Okesi in contrast to his uh, theme of materialism. As Okesi um, linguistically presents a version of materialism in Irish political strife. Does he thematically treat the conflict between theory and reality in the play? Within Juno and the Peacock itself, there are two opposing views of the relationship between theory or principle and material reality. Let's see what are they. On one hand, the betrayal of principles has tragic consequences. When principles are betrayed, what kind of con consequences can be there? We can see that Johnny is killed for his betrayal of his comrade Tancred. Mary is pregnant out of wedlock. Boyle is left against um, improvised and the family is humiliated. This is one kind of result being shown of betrayal of principles. However, on the other end, Principles have left Johnny armless and Mary unemployed. So it's a kind of situation, no matter which direction you go, you're not going to get anything because this is the kind of, kind of society you have created where everyone, every individual is selfish, is not thinking about a collective benefit but thinking about personal and individual benefit. So no matter you go for principle or you go for um, uh, materialism, you are ending up into nothingness, hollowness and purposelessness. Um, since Okese shows us um, both sides of the pictures, uh, 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 he says that when you are going for principles, um, you can see that Johnny um, is armless and he lost um, bones of uh, you know um, his body parts and we see Mary being unemployed however when they go for principles and they betray them this is how they are treated by society Mary defending her labor strike to her mother says a principle is a principle mother in contrast Joxer Captain Boyle's drinking companion contends it's better to be a coward than a corpse. So he would, he would say that um, it's better to be alive and lose your arm or, than being dead. Or it's better to be called um, a coward um, than being dead. And he's quite right in his opinion. Mrs. Boyle tells her son, ah, you lost your best principle, my boy, when you lost your arm. Then the only sort of principles that's any good to a working man. So for a working man, um, his arms are more important than his principles. What he would do by keeping principles and losing his arms? Um, he will not left for anything. Uh, Ronald Eiling argues that the play is centrally concerned with betrayal. Betrayal of man to man. Betrayal of man to humanity. Betrayal of man to women. 
betrayal of society, betrayal, in fact the theme is betrayal, that's what being told by Ronald. Bentham betrays Mary, Johnny betrays his uh, party, Boyle's indifference amounts to a betrayal of life. Mary also is a traitor, she abandons Jerry, her materialistic, her, her materialist principle to take up with a man without dogma. So, in fact, each character is a victim of betrayal. Um, so, how all of these things are adding into um, the major, uh, the prime theme, and that is of nothingness and purposelessness. In her apparent rejection of principles, Mrs. Boyle, Juno is a truly heroic figure, particularly at the beginning of the play when she is the only member of the family who is um, uh, precluded from work on account of principle. Mary and Johnny, or lack, therefore, Captain Boyle. Mrs. Boyle, necessary materialism, neither dooms nor saves her, but rather leaves her as a suffering survivor with a dead son. The same stiffless husband she had in the beginning, and a, and a daughter into an illegitimate relation, um, dis, uh, respected by society, whom she comforts when Mary laments the fatherlessness of her child, saying, It'll have what's far better. I'll have, it'll have two mothers. So these dialogues by Junu are showing men um, merciless character towards women and man bet man's betrayal um, to women counterpart. The play ends both with the condemnation of principles, as Mary Boyle says. Ah, why didn't I remember that then he wasn't a diehard or a stater, but only a poor dead son? and the deception of the utter degradation of the indifference that Boyle and Joxer represent in their characters. So it's basically um, Okese condemning two of these um, um, characteristics together. Uh, one is this conflict between principles and materialism and other is this instant sensitivity and indifference attitude of individuals towards society. Given Ocasio's apparent rejection of both abstract principles and its absence, the play puts forth a, a quotidian heroism in the form of Mrs. Boyle, Juno. Juno is not without principles like her husband, like her son, like her daughter. She's anything but indifferent. She's not an insensitive person. She's very sensitive and sensible woman. However, her principle supporting and protecting her family is firmly grounded in material reality, the reality that where she is living in and is divorced from political, religious and economic theories of the time. So, um, telling Mrs. Madigan shouts at the police, for you are the same as you were under the British government, never where you, yours are wanted. As far as I can see, the police as police in this city is null and void. Regardless of the political status of Ireland, the material reality for its citizens remain the same, with the same kind of people's attitude, particularly in the wake of continued interfractional violence. So, nothingness is being presented in each and everything. Um, very artistically by the writer. So we discussed how the themes of nothingness, hollowness and purposelessness uh, were projected in Ocasio's writing and how they were affecting, um, they were showing the effects of and the causes of um, these phenomena. Uh, moving on with the themes presented in the play, we are going to talk about now deterioration of relationship. We taught that war does not only affect on the economy of um, a country, um, chaotic situation in a country, destruction of many other um, uh, activities going on in the country, it also disintegrates unit of a family. It breaks relationships. Um, and how the sub-themes of poverty, religion and escapism 
add into this very act we are going to analyze the act of breaking relationships um, Juno and the Peacock by Sean O'Kese is set in the background of Irish World Civil War we understand that and throughout the play we can see the um, titular character Juno, Mrs. Boyle and Jack Boyle their relationship deteriorates and how dramatic events in their lives and the lives of their children take place in, in Johnny and Mary's life cause the entire family to collapse. We, um, in one of our um, uh, lectures where we started with the play Juno and the Peacock, we um, discussed that all of these characters, not as a, these characters not as a family, also individuals, they are portraying um, the categories of, the groups of, the factions of, of society. So we see that throughout the play, whatever disintegration takes place, it is take place. It is take place for it. It takes place for some certain reasons. Now, what are these reasons? Mainly, they are poverty, religion, and a conflict between appearances and um, realis realism. Let's see. Uh, once we analyze it, how we are able to understand it better. The play is set closely following the. Um, singing of the treaty dividing Ireland into sections. So um, the dispute, the um, the dilemma the society is facing, um, and the civil and the Irish civil war is caused by was that treaty that announced Ireland be, being divided into um, countries. It features the resulting conflict between the diehards and free staters. Um, diehards were the ones who wanted a united land and the free staters were the ones who support the treaty that was dividing the country. So the conflict represents the clash of um, uh, fanatical nationalism and uh, practicality uh, and of idealism and a recognition that what the people truly wanted was peace. So there was there was two conflicts going side by side. One conflict was between the fanatical um, nationalist, the jingoism and practicality. The other was between idealist people and people who truly wanted peace, who were not looking at peace, uh, achieving peace in, some, in, in, in any of the indirect ways, who directly wanted peace and for that matter they did not want war at any uh, point. So the play Juno and the Peacock explores some of the relevant ideas of time including the poverty, religion, religious attitudes and escapism of the working class in Dublin in the 1920s and how these characteristics affected the communities that lived within the tenements of Dublin at that time. Um, in the first act we see that a great deal of conflict between Juno and Boyle takes place. The root of this conflict, however, lies in um, Boyle's inability to accept responsibility. Um, sorry, may line the bara bolungi. And the root of this conflict lies in Boyle's inability to accept responsibility for supporting this family. Here when I say boys, it does not refer to Mary and Juno. It primarily refers to the male representation um, of the family, which is um, Captain Boyle and his son, um, Johnny. Uh, as they refuse to seek work and spend their days and night drinking um, with the manipulative um, scrounging friendship of Joxer and companionship of Johnny that he keeps in the play. Um, Juno is forced to act as wife, mother and sole source of income for the family. The prime motivation for this character being to keep her um, raked family um, unite together. Who has kept them, kept home together for the past few years? Only me. And she is very well aware of her role being mother as well as of sole breadwinner. This introduces us, uh, all these things, the role of Chinu as, um, as the, not only as the mother of the family but the breadwinner, um, introduces us very early on, on to the theme of poverty in the play, the theme of their social status in the play. 
And we discussed that the poverty introduces in the play right in the beginning when their social setting, their domestic setting is being displayed. The tension in the relationship is directly linked to poverty throughout the play. Whatsoever happens has one link attached with their social status. Boyle's lack of responsibility causing conflict between him and Junu when their financial situation is bad. Your poor wife slaving to keep the bit in your mouth. So Junu very well knows what she is doing. She knows that she has to earn bread for her family and uh, otherwise they will starve to death. And she on and off is reminding this very thing to her husband and her family. We can see Okese presenting both the positive and negative aspects he perceives in poverty. Although he praises poverty um, when it comes to showing your uh, motivation, showing your courage, showing your strength to stand against suffering of life, it also um, begets many ills, ills of deception, ills of um, um, lack of attention, ills of irresponsibility, ills of um, insensitivity in the characters. We see Boyle contrast the strength and ability that um, destitution can invoke through the character of Junu. So Junu is a contrasting character of Boyle and the sharp contrast tells us a con conflict between idealism and reality. Uh, this deterioration of relationship is not only caused by poverty in the play. Religion plays another important role. There are also a variety of different religious and um, attitudes expressed throughout the play which are causing these deterioration, uh, these integration, uh, this integration between relationships. One of Okese's chief mottos in the play seems to show the coexistence of strong religious convictions together with a sincere and human commitment to one's fellow men. So there is one religion that's a religion of sincerity, religion of peace and love um, for other fellow men. And however there are several other religions coexisting in a society. Some are uh, named and some are nameless. The, these nameless deceptive religions are shown by Okese um, uh, by religion followed by Bentham. Uh, that was a vague name uh, showing the vagueness of the religion itself where a religion can be um, molded and modified according to personal benefits. Uh, so Okese, tell, Okese is telling us that this integration is not only caused by poverty but religion plays significant role in it. So we see this religious conflict in characters and Junu's faith is sincere, um, authentic and traditional. Whatever religion Junu keeps, her faith is sincere, her intentions are sincere, they are authentic and real and they are traditional, they are not unusual. However, Boyle beliefs are just an equal contrast to them. No matter what religion he keeps, whether it's a religion of majority or minority or any third category, his faith is not sincere. He is insincere um, and he is doubtful um, and there is a contrast between his words and actions. Then we see Junu believes on Johnny's death as a God's act and God's will. However, at the same time uh, accepts that whatsoever bad happens, it, it happens because of men's act. However, Boyle presents God to be biased and sympathize with humans' helplessness. They call these stars causing all, these, all this misfortune. Um, he's found apologetic most of the time and indulged in self-sympathy. All the time you would find him complaining about um, some kind of pains um, all over his body for no reason in, in, uh, in fact. You will find him um, wandering here and there in the play however whenever it's, a ti it's time to walk or call for walk he would call that he's, his legs are not helping him walk around. So you will find his character um, a genuine liar in the play. So um, we will see that 
Junu believes that her husband should be praying novenas for a job. Novena is um, a recitation, a religious recitation of prayers and um, devotions for a special purpose during nine consecutive days. It's a special kind of prayer um, in the religion being followed by Junu and her family. Um, however, Boyle considers and she wants you know, her husband Boyle to offer that prayer in order to help their family achieve a better uh, status of life. However, Boyle considers such acts useless. Um, then we find another um, thread of this disbelief. Junu believes that Ireland needs, what Ireland needs is more piety, more sincerity and faithfulness. Boyles, Johnny and Bentham, all three of them, all, all these three characters portray unfaithfulness, betrayal to be their services in the time of need. We see Boyles betraying his family. We see Johnny betraying his family as well as his um, political party. We see Bentham bet betraying everyone and particularly Mary in the time of need. Um, then another threat uh, of religious conflict is Bentham espouses a religion by the name of Theosophy. This is projected as vague and abstract and certainly seems to be compatible with his own shallow commitment to people. So you mold your religion the way you want. That is a religion um, followed by the opportunist class presented in the Dublin. Juno's religious beliefs, so it's, it's a contrast to Juno's beliefs. Apparently we find Mary as well supporting Juno's beliefs and we find her a girl of opinions. However, her ex convey it all the opposite, matching quite of Bantham's beliefs in fact. Um, and the third aspect um, adding into the um, effects of deterioration uh, of relationships is basically idealism and reality, the strong conflict between idealism and reality. The writer dramatizes the conflict between the dream world and the world of reality. Um, this denial of reality is shown through almost all the characters except Juno's character and this shows what happens with relationships when a character is striped off his or her illusions and forced to face reality as it happens to um, Boyle when he gets to know about that he's not going to be inherited any legacy he refuses uh, to accept it. Um, same uh, it's happened again when he's told about Mary's um, consequences of a relationship with Bentham. Again, he refuses. And this, the same thing is happening with Johnny throughout the play. He's not able to accept his act of betrayal and being, being afraid of being um, uh, tortured and victimized by, her, uh, by his party. And that is what happens in the end. He's dragged and shot. Um, Boyle is presented as a peacock showy ostenta ostentatious character who struts throughout the world of the play on a false and imaginary sense of his own self-importance. Um, and Junu is presented as portrayed as a character of um, practicality and realism. So very first contrast is um, drawn between um, the titular characters Boyle and Mrs. Boyle. Uh, so it's not only a denial uh, of reality, it's denial within. It's parental conflict and uh, we can see throughout the play in all of the characters, in all of the major characters. Um, Boyle's whole life is a lie. His pains which are invented for the sake of shrinking and avoiding work become real to him. So what happens, what, whatever he is presenting and pretending to be in the, during the play happens, becomes real in the end. Um, Boyle refuses to face up to the truth and reality about Bentham and the deception surrounding the news of the will. Um, so it's a kind of conflict uh, that is being presented here. When reality invades at the conclusion of the play in the form of Mary's pregnancy and the actual removal of his material possession, Boyle is unable to cope with them. These are references of the denial of reality. Um, 
then what are other types of uh, denial uh, denials we can see mary's mary's uh, denial of values mary who who represents the younger generation also falls victim to illusion uh, we discussed her character to be a shallow character on her first appearance in the play she is shown to be on strike for a principle um, the oppressed and stifling atmosphere generated by the tenement life forces her to seek escape through Bentham. However, is she able to keep up her um, strike for principles when she gets indulged into an, uh, into an illegitimate relationship with the man and carries it on until it reaches um, harmful, disrespectful consequences? For her, he represents another way of life. Bentham, uh, for Mary, presents another way of life, a dream world um, and values outside the restricted and debilitating atmosphere within the two-roomed tenement. So, although she would say that she is a girl of principle, when it comes to running from reality, she is the one, first one to hold Bentham's hand. So, in today's talk, what we analyzed, we analyzed how Ocasio's works are representing the contemporary um, pressure and issues of nothingness, hollowness, and purposelessness in the background of Irish civil war that resulted in jingoism, um, extreme nationalism, um, which affected the society and the individual. Um, it affected the economy of the system, economy of the country, resulted into disintegration of family structure, units of family, demolished the psychology of people, um, destroyed them, made them insensitive and, and indifferent to their, uh, their realities and created gaps between generations. And we also analyzed in detail how the sub-themes of poverty, religion, and escapism um, added into the um, deterioration of these relationships. By this, I will end um, lecture of today, lecture 12, um, that was about the themes of um, Juno and the Peacock by Sean O'Kesse. Till the next time, I see you in lecture 13. Allah Hafiz.